this is Elizabeth Stahl, Cottage Caboodle. Thanks for stopping by. We are going to be painting today and practicing making candy canes so that you can give them some dimension and make them look rounded and um, find some ways to really embellish certain things in different ways. So come on in and let's get started painting. And today we're going to be working on some of the elements from my new North Pole Express packet. Um, the gnomes and little presents and things um, are all reminiscent of Christmas. And today in particular, um, this first lesson is going to be on the candy cane trim and how I do that. Um, there will be another lesson coming up on how to do the background uh, stenciled snowflakes. So um, this one though is going to be on the candy canes. I'm giving you just a minute to take a look. Sometimes in the pictures it's hard to see. Um, that first guy in the engine, he's got some three-dimensional wheels. They all have three-dimensional wheels. There's a little guy in the, the back of the engine that's holding on to a Christmas tree. And then we've got the gnomes that are doing the presents and the milk chocolate tanker truck. And then the candy cane caboose or the candy caboose. He's got a little bit of a um, lantern so you can get to see him a little bit more closely. The other element that you might be interested in is in the corners on these candies, I've got liquid glass. And so it makes them look as if they're real shiny and literally covered in glass. So we're gonna be going over though the, um, the candy cane border or how to make a candy cane or how I make a candy cane. The first thing that I like to do is to just have um, a nice smooth base coated surface. This one I just base coated with some of the DecoArt Chalky Gesso. This is black. Normally um, I don't use black all by itself for Christmas. I do use Payne's Gray most often, but for this we're going to use this black. Um, and I have sanded it down. I did not put another coat of it on there, so it's kind of got that little bit of a, I don't know, crusty, crusty look. I don't know. It's just not um, a nice smooth surface. If I were doing this for something to be finished, I would give it another, another coat. First thing I want to do is I want to decide how um, I'm going to have my candies. And so I use these see-through rulers a lot. You can see that they've got a grid on them. It's going to be difficult for you to see um, because it's not going to show up as well on camera. But I'm going to use that straight edge. And I know this is an inch wide, so I'm going to use that straight edge. If I were wanting to make sure that it was a certain width, I would know where to go on my ruler to make sure I got it at, say, a quarter of an inch. If I wanted it a quarter of an inch, I can measure and see that my line falls right on the quarter of an inch line, make another line, and there I have a quarter of an inch. If you have one of those tools that's used for borders, you could use that. Um, if you're used to using a compass um, to make a straight edge or to make a border, you could use that. I just use this because it's, it's convenient. Um, I might do a wider candy cane. So if I were to do that, I could, oops, I got my finger in the way. And then line it up and then I'll have a wider one as well okay then I tape it off you can tape it off with a number of different things um, I usually find myself going to the scotch magic tape um, a lot of people like the frog tape or the painters tape I don't mind it and I have used it however it's just easier for me to see where my line is on something like this with the scotch tape I'm going to take off plenty to go 
on one side of my line and line it up so that it's on my chalk line like so get it stuck put it on the other inch as straight as I can. Now if you reposition this too many times, you're going to have to just start over and get a fresh piece of tape because it just won't, um, I, I don't rely on that adhesive to stay on the very edges to keep that paint from bleeding under. Then I just grab something that's got a, a pretty straight edge and um, is hard so I don't grab a piece of paper and um, I just take one of these little micro claws this is one that my eye doctor gave me and so I put it over the edge of one of those wood pieces and there I have kind of a, a, a burnisher I guess they call them and I just go over that edge and I can make sure that I get it down there really, really good. I wanna go with the length of the tape, not across, because if there's something to catch, then I can catch that, and then it will not uh, keep a nice tight seal on there. But I wish I could say this was my idea on how I came up with this, but it wasn't. Um, I bought a new phone case, and um, it came with a screen protector. And the screen protector was so fancy that they gave me a link to a video in order to install the, the screen protector. Well, one of the things that they had me do was um, use this little tool that they had made. And it was just this cloth folded over and attached to a hard plastic little card, almost like the size of a business card. And that's what you use to go um, on on the screen protector so it wouldn't scratch it. And I thought, well, that would work out really well for getting those edges down um, when I'm taping because I'm always afraid to use my fingernail because it's gonna gouge it or something. So once I have that down on my candy canes, I have um, usually five colors. I usually have a dull white. In this case, it's bleach sand my highlight or, or bright white. I've got my mid red or my brighter red. In this case, it's watermelon slice. And then I use a shade color red. And in this case, it is burgundy wine. Then I use um, Payne's Gray because Payne's Gray can be something that um, is really nice to shade any of it. So that's what I use. So I've got my bleach sand here. I'm going to take a little on my palette. I use one of the larger palettes, the 12 by 18, and then I paint on a glass surface. And um, this glass surface, you know, you look and say, oh, that's so fancy. No, it's not. I got the glass out of an old table at a garage sale, and um, it was $10, and I got rid of the table and kept the glass, and um, it's just really a nice surface because when it gets cruddy, you can you can wipe it down. Um, if it gets something stuck to it, you can use a razor blade on it. And I like the black towel underneath. It gives me um, a nice um, blank surface. And plus, it's not hard on your eyes. With Sometimes white gets to be hard on your eyes when you spend hours and hours and hours here. So I'm going to get into that bleach sand. Um, I use the oval wash brushes a lot for base coating, especially large areas. I don't want a ton of water in that. I'm going to load up that brush and I'm going to lay on my paint. I am not going to go um, side to side. I'm going to run with the length because I don't want to be pushing that paint under that tape. And in a patient world, I would wait patiently for this to dry, and then I would give it another nice, solid coat so that it's 
gets really nice and covered so that this is probably not going to be as nice as if I would have let it dry but I want to make sure that we can go on and you don't need to watch paint dry that's just not why you're here I'm thinking so then once I've let it dry I can peel back my tape and if I pull it off to the side I'm going to be much more likely to have a nice line it looks like I got a little chunk there that's a little bit off but for, for the most part it wasn't bad and then I pull off to the side so I have a couple of little areas that I might by the time I'm done want to to take and touch up but not too bad so that's how I get the the paint on there um, I would do the same thing at this top one if that were something I were working on well I already have one done so here we've got the stripes already done and I've got a small a medium and a large one and um, I kind of just kind of wing it and look at what kind of um, size brush I would like uh, depending on how wide it is if it's a very narrow one like in the piece I showed you earlier let me grab that again if you're on the trim of some of these cars that's going to be a number two flat a number two whereas the ones on the edge here on the border are going to be a number four flat and that way I can let the width of the brush do work for me and I don't have to do um, the work in making sure that they stay even because the width of the brush is going to keep that even for me so I'm going to start off with well I guess you've seen the let's do one of the bigger ones um, I'm thinking I would probably use an 8 down here or maybe I'd use the 8 up here um, you can always add things to it so let's keep that one out and then I'm gonna get a 12 and I'm gonna check it out yeah 12 up there would work let's start with the 12 so that you can see what it's gonna look like I always have some water on my palette um, either I tap it on or I have a pipette that I just squirt some water on my palette with and that way I can pick it up when I need it without having to go all the way over. no um, you I know you have water close but it's nice to have just a small amount to be able to pick up so I've got my 12 flat the wa the brush is moistened I'm going to get a nice puddle out and then I'm going to add it. I want it to be washy, but I don't want it to be a light wash. I kind of want it to be just a little bit sheer, but not, I don't know, not super, super see-through. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I want somewhere for it to, I want to be able to travel with it. I want to be able to make it, um, I don't want it to be solid and just one paint color. I'm going to start with my flat edge and I'm gonna pull in a line. I don't, some people do this beautiful curve and they can do it all the way down. I'm not that good. I go about, about so far over. If you've got water in there, then you've got some place to go with it. Um, meaning you can go over it a time or two and it's not gonna make it any worse or better. If they're not exactly even, that's okay. You don't have to have them perfectly even. If you've ever seen a video or something when they make candy cane, um, while it's hot, it's like taffy. And then they add the red stripe to it and they are twisting it and turning it and making it into this beautiful swirled confection well um sorry there we go um so it's not going to be perfectly even and it's going to look much more conspicuous that one got 
kind of close. It's going to look much more conspicuous if I try and fix that. And then I smudge it and I try and um, rebase coat around it. I'm just better off going and trying to get it as even as possible the next time. It's not going to show once you've got your highlighting and your shading and all of that there. So I'm using Watermelon Slice and a number 12 flat. And I'm going to line down my candy cane. Okay, I have gone ahead and done some of this so that you can see it, and I did it off camera. That way you don't have to wait for me to go through every single stroke. Um, I did not finish down here, and remember when you're doing um, the little stripes, it's okay if they're not exactly perfect. Um, you're going to do just your, the best that you can. And I could have gone with a smaller brush. I continued with the four flat on this one. And I'm just going to, oops, that was an ugly one. Sometimes when you're trying to do things from a, a weird angle, it doesn't exactly work out like you'd hoped. Um, trying to soak up some of that puddle that I got going there and then I'll go back at it. I've got some little chunks of paint. If things look a little bit different on my painting table that's because they are. I had some technical difficulties and this whole videotaping thing is still new to me so we had to um, revamp and um, I got the whole video done and then realized that oh my goodness um, Somewhere along the line, the camera stopped. So I'm learning, and thank you for going on that journey with me. Um, the next step, after we've got the stripes, these were in Watermelon Slice. Um, again, this was the 12 flat, this was the 8 flat, and then a 4 flat. I went back and I took just a little bit of my bleach sand, and on little places like, I don't know if you can even see that little kind of hiccup, you can just take a little bit of bleach sand and you can get it all cleaned up, okay? So I've already gone ahead on this one. This is where we're going, and so I'll talk about that as we continue. Um, the next step after you get the stripes on is with your next darker color. In this case, remember, I was going to use burgundy wine, and that's a great shade color for that watermelon slice. It... Um, it reddens it just a smudge, but gives you um, still that feeling that it's a pretty Christmas red. Um, I just love it when it kind of tricks us. So I'm going to just shade on every one of my red stripes so that you can almost feel that that candy cane is turning. I just carefully shade each one. I use that clean edge of my brush to, when I have a little bit of a misstep, um, I can easily clean that up if I use that clean edge of my brush. So again, burgundy wine. I don't want it too deep on my brush because if it goes into the center, I'm going to lose that highlight, that pretty highlight. And I can always go over it to deepen the very edge. You can see that these are not quite deep enough. Again, I could have left my tape on here um, had I not been demonstrating, and I would still not have to worry about that nice clean edge. So let's pretend that I did all the way down, then this will be dry by the time I come back and I can lay down that other side. Mine is not dry, but you're going to get the, the idea. Okay, so oh, I went over here.
you get the idea. We're just gonna we're gonna shade each one of those. Then you're gonna come to a point where you're at this bigger one, and we're gonna use this bigger one um, just because you're gonna be able to see it better. I can deepen some of those shades if I want to go back. Oops, that one might need a little bit of bleach sand when I get to it. <clears throat> So once you have that, um, the stripes on and the stripes are shaded, the next step that, that I do, and I don't know if this is the right, um, I don't know, the right progression or not, I'm going to dry brush a little bit of Snow White down the center of my candy stick. So I always start where I want it to be brightest. And I don't want to start on my red because that's going to show up. I'm going to be more likely to be able to hide something on that bleach sand. And um, I had a little too much. With the lighter white type colors, um, I tend to have my dry brush a little less dry and have a little more paint on it. Um, unless I need it to be super duper soft. So now I've, I wanted it to be bright at, brightest in the center, both east to west and north to south. So now, since there's less paint in my brush, I can go back and instead of making that super bright just in the center, I can kind of mess that up and create a little more depth to that that highlight so I'm gonna let that dry and while I'm letting that dry I'm gonna do my shade on the outside of each one of the sides so remember when I told you I always use a big brush well I'm not kidding so here's my three-quarter I had out my half but there's no way that I'm gonna be able to get the kind of shade on there and people give me a hard time um, but I don't know my my grandma Gordon um, my parents were divorced when I was really young so I spent a lot of time with my grandmas and they were both characters and my dad's mom used to say um, for shoes she wore a seven but an eight felt so good she bought a nine so I kind of relate that to this whole brush thing that um, you know, a 10 felt so good that I went to a three quarter or a half inch felt so good that I went to a three quarter. I just like the extra water it gives me. I'm not loading a bunch of paint on here. I'm going to use my palette right so that you can see it under the camera. Um, I don't have that even halfway across my brush. <clears throat> but I do have water there that's going to help my cause here. It's going to help me to make a nice um, shade. So I want that Payne's Gray. I talked too much and I got, this is not a pretty side load. Um, okay, I'm concentrating. I'm concentrating. No. Okay, so I've got my side load of Payne's. And I'm kind of just... Walking it down the edge, and every so often I can grab one of my mops and soften that. Now, Payne's Gray is a beautiful color, and um, but it can get very dark and you know very quickly. So I'm gonna come up from this direction doing what I never do, which is push that shade away from me or that side load away from me. I always pull towards myself. Why is that? Um, you know, the line work, I always pull towards myself too, or strokes always towards myself. I just think that we have um, better control, but it could be that maybe there's something physiological that, you know, that makes it better. But I've got my shade, my first shade on there. Um, what I was saying about the Payne's Gray is Payne's Gray can get too dark, too fast on you very, very easily. 
So if I were going to really load up my brush goopy, um, I might not have the desired effect and then I can't fix it. So where I shaded here while that we're waiting for that to dry, I can go on this one and this one I came at it a little bit heavier as long as I keep that narrow, I can do it. Notice that my brush is not perpendicular to the edge, meaning I'm not like this patting a nice deep float. I'm at an angle. I want that shadow to be there, but I want it to be something that um, is very narrow. But I still, because I paint with a lot of water, I still want to have, um, I still want to have a big brush. So I've got that angle and I'm sliding it down the edge. And when you're doing my North Pole Express, you're going to have some time while you're doing the border and the different sections or the different sizes of candy canes. You're going to have some time to go back over with everything being dry. Meaning once you go around the edge one time, where you started is going to be dry, right? So you can have a much easier time getting that where you want it. So. And I'm playing too much and I'm going to be sorry, but um, without letting it dry. Okay, but you can see how I've got that shaded. I'm going to let that dry. While I was letting it dry, if I didn't have something to do, I noticed that I could touch up on my background here and here. Or I could fuss with the, the bleach sand. Um, but that's, that's all part of it <clears throat> is kind of having that dance to go back and forth between. So over here where I was just kind of messing around, I can go and I can even start in the middle as long as I'm able to use that clean edge of my brush. You hear that? My dog is having a puppy dream and um, she's growling and barking. And so if you hear something, it's Maylee and she's she's having a great time doing whatever she's doing, but um, she's a little noisy. Gee, last time you got to hear my cat snoring um, and this time you get to hear puppy dreams. This is like painting and um, a zoo all rolled up into one. Okay, so now I think this one is dry, the bigger one that we were working on. So I'm going to just load up my brush again, pinch off that clean edge to keep that nice and clean. And then I'll, I'll start from the top, keep that slant to my brush, still have a little too much water, keep that slant to my brush. And sometimes, like what I just did, I'll get that wet because there's not much color there. And then I'll go and start that run over. And that color then has some place, rather than fighting the wet, I want it to be wet, but fighting that it's getting less and less wet as I go. Because I use water, I've got a lot of time to kind of fuss and it keeps it open. It's kind of like um, extender or something so that you can keep that playtime open. So I've got kind of a hooky. So you can see that soft shadow on either side. You could use another color too. If you're not crazy about Payne's Gray, you could use um, black. You could use, I've seen people use Deep Midnight. You could use a lot of different colors. I just like this color. Um, I think that the blue makes that white much 
whiter, if that makes sense. So we're going to let that one dry. So we've got this all um, painted and raring to go. I've got a couple of things I want to talk to you about, things that I've found that I love. And I always want to share tools and things that I love because they might help you too. Um, the first one is just, I don't even know what they're called, but um, these are my pointy tweezer dealies. Um, I ordered some uh, little embellishments like crystals and it was for nail art. And I ordered them from Amazon and they came with these great tweezers. Okay, and they've got a real point on them. And I used them for the the um, the uh, the little embellishments. But I really prefer for the embellishments these guys. And I don't know, again, what they're called. But it's not a pencil. You would think that it is. But it's kind of sticky almost. So when you go down and touch the crystal... It sticks to that you barely have to push and then you can put it wherever you have your adhesive and it works great so I didn't really like them for the um, the little pretties but what I do like these for and we'll see if it's gonna happen again this bleach sand is an old bottle of bleach sand and when I put some out on my palette before um, a goober got stuck in it and I'm hoping that a goober gets stuck again so I can show you but um, of course it's not doing it, but what it's great for is, you know, these little dry businesses that come on your paint. This isn't a real big one, but, um, and it's kind of wet still, but usually, except there you go. Usually not when I'm showing you, it comes off really easy with these and, um, if they're dry and then if you've got kind of a paint goober that's plugging up the, um, the little paint hole um you can take this and go around that edge and if there's a big you know how they get dry and stuff if there's a big thing then you can just pick it out right so that's cool the other thing is is say you've got um what i had earlier today and you're bleh, you're pouring out some paint or you're squeezing out a little bit of paint and oh my goodness it just stops okay and something is definitely stuck in there. Let's see if I can get it. It's, oh, I got it. I think there's something stuck in there. Yay. So now I can go back in and pull. Oh, it's there. And sometimes I can, look at that. See, it came right out. And that is a beautiful thing because then my fingers aren't getting all messy and gross and I'm not dripping paint everywhere. So I do like these. Um, they are, again, some sort of little pointy, pointy tweezer, but um, they definitely are going into my must have box. I will take these, um, you know, when I'm teaching or whatever, but they've got a little cap on them so that you don't impale your fingers. And um, that's a really great thing. So love that. Now, the next thing that I found, you guys probably know all about this, but I didn't. And this is um, a, I had to make an order for some paint. And oddly enough, all the little things that I bought weren't out of stock, but the, the paint colors that I needed to prep some boards, oh, they were all out of those. So I got a chance to go shopping. This is the General's Sketch and Wash, and I got this from Hofcraft. And um, what it is, is, oh, I'm gonna show you some, I'll show it after I do this though. Um, what it is, is it's a graphite, and it comes in the lighter color too. But say I'm sketching something out, and um, I don't know, I wanna sketch out a circle or something, okay? And then I want to do the eyes. Only this eye, I get way bigger. This is water soluble. Look at this, you guys. Boom, 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 boom. Gone! That easy. It's almost like a chalk pencil, but different. And it comes, um, like I said, in two colors that I know of. 
and it feels on the surface a lot more like a um, a lot more like a chalk pencil or no it feels like on the surface a lot more like a pencil and the chalk pencils um, have that screechy feeling and I don't necessarily like that so my husband um, many of you know the story about he and I and the whole oyster shell thing um, I do Santa's on oyster shells and that was Shane's idea and so I thought it was ridiculous, but long story short, it wasn't so ridiculous and it's been a very, very good thing for me to do and get known, get my name out there and get known for. So um, the other night when he said, you know, your little uh, treat train ornaments that you have, I have two ornaments that are this shape and one is a gingerbread and one is a snow, a snowy. And he said, you know, have you ever thought of doing some other kind of character on that treat train? And again, in my head, I'm going, oh, here we go. And, um, <laughs> but I called Mr. Doug Fred Fredrickson at um, Pinecraft and said, hey, could I get um, some of these big? And in a day I had them and he had to mail them and everything. He's like magic. And, um, here is an Uncle Sam version coming soon to a website near you. So that is on the horizon. Okay, so now we're dry with all of this nonsense and I've showed you a couple of the new things that I love. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you that I love is a brush and um, Many of you have talked to me about my brushes, emailed me about my brushes, um, and I don't have, I know that everybody's brushes, there's a lot of great brushes out there, and that there's people who get used to certain things. I use Jasonia brushes, and a while back, um, this black fiber came out, and this is a new brush. They've had the rounds, they had the midliners, now they have what they call a choice detailer. Now, I don't know, these are, there's, you know, all these great brushes, but oh my goodness, you guys, these hold a ton of water. And um, you, you know, it's speaking my language already, but then it comes off to a nice, beautiful little pointed tip. So this is paper, so it's not gonna be super pretty. So if I'm pulling a stroke, I can get that really nice and full. Now watch. Look at that. It's beautiful. And if you are a stroke person, this is, oh, I, this is because it's paper. It never does this on wood. Um, this is a beautiful brush for stroke work. That was not going to be pretty. I could feel it when it came off my brush. Let's just go over it. So these are great brushes. Um, they come in, I don't know if there's a zero, but I think they come in one through five or six. When I talked to Mark Jansen about these, um, when I first was introduced to them, he said that um, his mom can paint like an entire painting with just two different sizes of these choice detailers. So these are a really nice brush. So I wanted to show you the bigger one so that you could kind of see, um, you know, what it's like, but look at how pointy that gets and that big belly holds a ton of water. So I love that. I love that. Um, I'm going to be using one that is much smaller. This is a number two. You could also use a liner if you'd like. Um, and we'll see if this works because I didn't have, um, I didn't have handy the one that, uh, I usually use and I'm just double checking to make sure I don't have it here. No, I don't have it. And I didn't want to go hunting for it. I wanted to get this done for you all. So I'm going to load up that choice detailer with just a little bit of, um, Snow White. Now, when I say a little bit, I want it to show, but I don't want, I can always go brighter. I don't want it to be too harsh. 
And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to, I'm not starting at the end of my candy. I want to stay in the middle and I want to just pull a white stripe down the middle. And what this is, is it's just making that highlight even more pronounced so that as we look at all of this candy, that's going to pick up and draw our eye to it, and it's going to say, yeah, that's round. So that's how you do the candy canes. Um, now I would go back and I'd clean up my edges if I needed to and stuff. Um, you can always add more colors. If I wanted on a bigger one, I may very well put small green stripes on either side, okay? Or I could do it in different different combinations of color but for Christmas I might add some green so um, I hope that you like it I hope that it's helpful to you and as you're painting the North Pole Express I hope that it makes it easier for you to do these little things in different places on um, the design and um, I guess until next time, I hope that you just keep making your house cuter and cuter and that you are spreading your sparkle all over the place and um, just as happy as, as you can possibly be. So this is Lizbeth Stahl, Cottage Caboodle. Uh, please take the time to like this page and um, on my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up. That's how YouTube lets me keep doing this. So I appreciate your time and um, happy painting.